What I loved about this chapter is you say tempo is borrowed. That just hit, <laughs> that hit home. <laughs> like just because you had tempo in that shot, you borrowed it. You need to, you know, get it back in the next shot. That's right. That really, that hit home. Because again, it's just something that you're constantly working at and, yeah. and you have to accept that and you have to find it today. Yeah. yeah. Because just because you found it yesterday doesn't mean you automatically or have it Or even in the beginning today. of the round to the end of the round, you yep. know, it's that variable. Yeah. The tempo can be yeah. that Because variable. it can be varied because maybe I'm more stressed up and I've been busy or I'm sluggish. Mm -hmm. So it affects my tempo or it's just like the wind just makes me affect my tempo yeah. or the pace of play affects my tempo. Yes. So it's external things and internal things mm -hmm. affecting it. So you need to tune it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. And like we would love if every golfer could take every club in their bag and be able to swing it at three tempos, mm -hmm. you know, so they could sit, swing it slowly, a slow tempo, a medium tempo or a fast tempo. And that, you know, just, it makes you actually be able to hit more shots, mm -hmm. but also just feel more comfortable like you own your swing. Yeah. Yeah. Th that you can dial in and, hey, I'm, I'm stressed today. I can dial it down. Hey, I feel good today. I can dial it up. Yeah. yeah. But if you haven't actually trained those tempos, they're just more abstract thoughts. Yeah. Too. Exactly. So it's, yeah. And yeah. any player, dude, you know it, which gets you the sink in the swing <laughs> and understanding that it can vary from day to day. Yeah. And like, and then, you know, it's not a mystery to it. And I think in today's game, because many do super cool things with improving the speed of the swing. Mm. And it's, you know, really popular now to work on doing that. We think it's, it's really good, but you still, even though you have improved, you can swing faster, you still are going to be variable. So exactly. you still need, your hundred might be a different hundred, yeah. but you still need. You still need the 50 yeah, and 75% yeah, change within a yeah. round. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And you yeah. still, even though if you can swing it faster, you're still going to have some days where you're tighter. Yeah. Or you need to bring it down a notch. Or some days we have so much adrenaline. Yeah. Anyway, so it's it's dynamic and important for all players. Yeah, absolutely. So let's round it out with tension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How to tame tension, you say. <laughs> and when I was reading through this chapter, I immediately went to layup shots versus approach shots. So at my home course, I have two par fives that I, I usually lay up on. And the layup's about 150 yards. So, you know, a nice eight, maybe a seven. And tension's low. It's just a little easy shot that I have to just hit a big fairway again. But then I go to an approach shot that's 150 yards and the tension's much higher. Like I like the layup shots, I'm hitting beautiful shots most of the time yeah. because it's in my mind, more room for, you know, there's less pressure. You're more at ease. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so let's get into tension, tension awareness, <laughs> the final. Well, I mean, you can have a great golf swing and tension ruins it. I mean, meaning technically, like I told a, a lady today, I said, technically your swing, it's great, but there's way too much tension in your upper body and in your shoulders. So we worked on getting the low center of gravity and getting the, the tension out. And it had nothing to do with her making a better shoulder turn, but the swing was just freer. The arms were freer. The speed was there. The contact was there. I mean, the two places that we see tension creep in and ruin good golf swings, first is in the hands. And then in the upper body jaw area. So found some for the hand could be just an impact. Suddenly just grab it. Yeah. But I said, we, we see many and even more on the women's side that they actually grip it too light. So then they have to grab onto it. And they say, everybody's told me she grip it as light as possible. But maybe not for all if that makes you then grab onto it. So that's what we like everybody get to explore. They like to grip pressure and keeping constant is the key. Mm -hmm. Or do you need a little more, a little more firmness to keep it constant? So it's the exploration of if it's in shoulders and jaw or hands. Where Lynn said it's the most common places. So if I do it lighter, medium, firmer, and I need to see in general what works good for me. But then you, we have your situation it happens to everybody. Some it's a tight fairway, or for you it's mm -hmm. the approach shot. If I know there's certain shots that 
tension creeps in, then I knew, no, it's, it needs to be my cooked spaghetti feeling mm -hmm. in the play box in this shot. Yeah. You don't need it for layup, but you need it for the approach shot. Yes. So, so a more intentional play box. So, it's, mm -hmm. so it's like for you, it's the external condition of the hold that makes you have a, a good or not so good process. Mm -hmm. You need to be in charge more of the process and knowing, you know, when there is this approach shot, I need to have a little edited plan for the feels I have because yeah. I naturally get tighter. Yeah. So let's, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, Tori, that like first is the awareness and then it's trying different things. After you have this awareness, I'm tight. <laughs> or I'm tense or, you know, I am gripping it too tight. And then trying different things that, yeah, different play boxes that help diminish that. Exactly. Yeah. So now that we've rounded up balance, tempo, tension, how can we manage that on the course in the middle of a round? Maybe things are starting to go a little south on the back nine. Yeah. <laughs> what can we do? We call to... it just hitting the downward spiral a yeah, little bit. Yeah, like we can <laughs> sense something's around the corner. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> How can we nip that in the butt? How can we bring that balance, temp good tempo? Awesome tension awareness. Well, I mean, let's go with balance. If you're in the cart, get out of the cart and stand on one leg <laughs> or make a swing being only on your right leg and swinging it only with your left arm. So it's diagonal balance. Mm -hmm. So you can actually feel a low center of gravity. How would you do it with tempo? First, you need to know yourself is that like, you know, if I lose it, is my tempo those goes off or tempo or tension. If you don't know, you do a little bit of each, but the some yeah. or know that, you know, balance seems my thing. And then they do what Lynn said. And then be more intentional about it, walking into golf shot and keep that focused in the end of the swing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and if I know it's my tempo gets wacky, very often need to just first take some deep breath with long exhales to calm down. Because if I have longer exhale, I calm down my my whole nervous system. So taking long exhales and while you're waiting for other people, make a couple of swings, close your eyes and feel a more slow motion swing. And then commit more. Like if you make a practice swing, make it calmer and then... Make your, your game within the game to stay with a calmer swing to the finish and have that as your main objective, not the outcome of the shot. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's so important because you have to have tried things out to then do them when you're on the course. But it was interesting even today with the lady, I guess, Pia, you told her, okay, now she'd started to lose it and was, mm -hmm. you know, it was unraveling mm -hmm. and um, you told her to swing it at 50% tempo. And she told me, she said, I thought, wow, it isn't going to go anywhere. <laughs> and then she said, I did it at 50% tempo. And she goes, it went just as far as it would if I did a hundred percent, you know, and I think that's a good thing to understand because I think so many of us try to optimize every shot. This has got to be perfect or I want it to be as best as it can be. And we just drop down that tempo and now let's have just, you know, more oily shoulders or, you know, a lighter grip pressure or more constant lighter grip pressure and just see what happens. You know, I, I, it's so interesting that people sometimes like, oh, I don't want to change anything, but I want it to be different. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, that's but, golfers. But I know, but to, but to dare to do that yeah. on the course. Yeah. And it's so know. cool because obviously with her going to 50, it ended up being 95 because what she was doing was. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. No. So it's, it's the subjectiveness of it, but that's how it works. Yeah. And, and I've told many, I'm like, okay, I know, I know. So when you start to lose it, I just want you to play a hole with your feet together. They're like, you want me to play on the course with my feet together? I'm like, yes. I mean, there's no rule that says you can't do that. Yeah. Just so you get back to something that you feel like you're back in your body and you can manage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A reset. Yeah, and a reset. Yeah. 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 And it's totally possible to do that. Because sometimes it you feel like you can't get out of it, yeah. but it's absolutely possible to. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if I'm reset, if, like you said, yeah. If I'm rushed to the tee and we don't get a chance to hit, you know, any shots, and I just feel like uh, I will play the first two holes with my feet together. Yeah, yeah. I just start because the for round you, that way. Just makes yeah. things start yeah, just, off good. Yeah, and I just feel like, oh, there's my body, there's my club, there's my swing, and I get it. And then, okay, now we can ease into the round. Yeah. 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 
And that reminds me too, at the end of each chapter, you guys have an action plan. (laughs) And it really is, again, we're keeping things simple over at Vision 54, but it's something you can go out to your range and just go through these steps that you put. It's different after each chapter. And again, it brings more awareness to your golf game, your golf swing, the way you are. Yeah, and we it, for us it's just been so important because many that you know work on their fitness they need they know they actually need to do the stretches mm-hmm. you need to do the the yeah. <laughs> whatever <laughs> exercise otherwise nothing happens with the technical everybody knows I need to do those drills I'm learning but when it comes to the non technical many think if they just read it to understand it it's done. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 no. You need to like do it to make it yours. You need to do it. And then you got to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. You got to do it again. Reps are required. Yeah. (laughs) Reps are required. Okay. So on to, to me, the more difficult things, Mm -hmm. which is we're on to the last two. So one, no, excuse me, last three, build emotional resilience store memories, and then drown self-talk and useful (laughs) thoughts. Okay. So let's get into it. Let's start with build emotional resilience. Yeah. This is one of those that is really useful to pay attention to more between shots. And when we play a round of golf, you have like four hours in between shot Mm -hmm. time, maybe hopefully three and a half only, depending (laughs) on the pace of play. But this is a lot of time. And and when we, we learn about, you know, all of us have emotional states. Some days we're confident, other days we're worried, some days we're anxious, other days we're feeling super strong and powerful. Mm-hmm. I mean, the emotional states for everybody fluctuates. So, and we want to have this resiliency with our emotions. And we also know with emotions, they only last 30 to 90 seconds unless we feed them. Mm-hmm. So we need to know which one. Do I want wow. to feed that helps me? And yeah, that, that we're so helped. fortunate. There's so much science being done now. Yeah. And we know if we compound more the negative emotions, if I'm anxious, frustrated, whatever, all of those, and I, I keep staying mm. and I keep feeding it, it shuts down your access to your abilities. I mean, it shuts down you feeling your swing. It shut down for some making decision. It's for some it shut downs visually being able to see parts, but we know it it shuts down your access to skills, you know. Your best self. Yeah. Yeah. It, and you know, it was interesting because if we'd asked this question fifteen years ago, do you know what happens when you have negative emotions and you and you feed these negative emotions that there's this hormone that gets secreted called cortisol? Nobody in the room would have understood that. Mm-hmm. When we ask it today, everybody knows about cortisol. I mean, cortisol is stress it, hormone. It's a stress hormone. It's <laughs> but, the number one stress hormone, and that's what happens when we feed those negative emotions. And as more cortisol gets secreted, as Pia said, then we start to lose access to things we yeah. actually need to play good golf. And it's so interesting our game because the way the game is, and we're out there for a long time. There's so many golfers that drag themselves into. Yeah, it's self inflicted. Yes. Yeah. Or so, they're, they're already in cortisol yeah, and yeah. warm up. And we high achievers expect a lot and all of that. Mm-hmm. So the emotional resilience comes in that many of us, just because of this happening, we need to spend more time between shot to focus on things that I appreciate, to focus on things I'm grateful for, or co- focus on things that are more on the positive axis. And I need to do it if I care about performance because when I build up the emotional resilience or more emotions on the positive side, you're going to have access to coordination, access to visual acuity, access to all these things you want to make good technical loss. Yeah. So it's directly related to your technique. Mm-hmm. But we, because we get frustrated on the golf course, you need to be more intentional about it. Yeah. So it's not just like, oh, this is just that happy stuff. No, no, no. This is about (laughs) hardcore performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And understanding how these emotions work. And if you want to be a high performer and enjoy the game more, there are many rounds. I just need to focus on that more. Look at the beautiful nature or bring up a happy memory in my own mind. Yeah. Well, and I want to say, I think it's so cool because like Max Homa, you know, cool guy on the PGA Tour. He he talks about keeping a gratefulness journal mm-hmm. now. And, um, you know, we, we've we been fortunate 
to coach Lilia Vu a little bit. And she came to us when she didn't have emotional resilience. She mm -hmm. had lost her LPGA card. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she was thinking about not playing golf anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this year she won four times in two majors. Mm -hmm. But I mean, she didn't realize at the time when, when this was a few years back after she'd lost her LPGA card, I mean, that there were things that she could do to change her emotional state. And certainly has been, she's proven that to be a good thing. So as I want to add yeah, to that, because yeah, yeah. The, the, we said the negative one, like a kind of long lasting and can take you way down, but the positive emotions, same things. So when you, mm -hmm. you focus on them, they are long lasting in you. Yeah. So start before you get to the golf course, listen to the music to make you feel good. Yeah. Only call the people that are going to help you get in a good emotional state and give yourself a good baseline to start off the run with. Yeah. yeah. And you kind of just answered the question that I was going to say, but how do you tap into that joyfulness? Because you, you bring up the word joyful in the book. Mm. And that word has a lot of energy to it. It's yeah. There's something about it. So how do you actively tap into that when you're having a tough day, tough week, tough, you know, when you're not in a good space? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, maybe right now my golf isn't bringing me any joy, <laughs> but yeah. there's things outside of my golf mm -hmm. that bring me joy. And maybe, or maybe, you know, that I think of times in my past that I have been joyful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's lots of different ways to access it. Yeah, yeah because yeah. You, it could be things that you have tough things at work or tough things in life and tough things in golf. It might be all coming at you, Yeah, you know, yeah. and that's when we need to go like, okay, I'm so grateful for that deep breath I just took right now. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful I'm standing on this green grass. Sometimes we need to go to micro things in yeah. the moment. Yeah. And then it's to be uh, finding those. Yeah. Because the end goal, too, is to just to be as present as possible yeah. on that golf course. Yeah. yeah. Like whatever is going on outside the golf course, that's there. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. But right now you're on the golf course. Yeah. And, and just to realize when, when there are these things are going on, maybe even off the golf course, then that's when you need to use these tools even more yeah. to Absolutely. balance it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And the best golfers out there are experts at this. Yeah. Maybe. Well, well, yeah. And, and they've learned these skills. Yeah. And I think these skills should be available to everybody. Yeah. Well, they are. <laughs> yeah. They are. But I yeah. feel like we have to go through these yeah. trials and tribulations out there in the golf course yeah. and really have to feel it mm -hmm. yeah. and work through it and get these tools and start working yeah. with them. Actually, yeah. it happened yesterday on the course, the, the first hole I was with my group, and on the first hole, they were all unraveling. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and I said, before we tee off a number two, okay, everybody, let's stop here. And I had them all do a little bit. I got them all to breathe. I got them all to access something to get here and, and just to do the reset. I mean, it didn't take more than 30 seconds, but then they all got going much better. But well, so, but they were all probably very nervous to yeah, play in yeah. front of you. <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah, yeah, that exactly. is probably yeah. what they were feeling. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> let's just, let's use that as an example yeah. right now. Yeah. So you're on the first tee or people are watching yeah. or something that has brought you to be very nervous. How do you click out of that? How do you play your best golf through that? If you're really nervous, your first ally is your breath. Yeah. You know, and just that you've practiced some breathing. Mm -hmm. So like this morning we taught the ladies some box breathing. Yeah. Or, you know, just the understanding that if my exhales are longer than my inhales, then I'm activating my parasympathetic part of my nervous system, which is the relaxation response. So just the breath when I'm nervous is right there. You just need to have actually trained it a little bit. Yeah. Because the worst thing always with you. The worst thing you can say, oh, don't be nervous. There's nothing to be nervous about. That's like yeah. it's not going to work. So, yeah. but then is we just need to check. We ask them. So when you do get nervous, is your tendency that you swing too fast, or you think too much, or you get tight? We just need to know something happens to me. Yeah. When mm -hmm. I get nervous. Mm -hmm. So the breath is always up. But then in some day, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always start like then overthinking. Okay, then I wanted to sp do this and so ready and spend less time in the play box. Yeah. Or for someone who gets tighter and then is extra must feel the cooked spaghetti. So we need, then we help them individually with how they react to being really nervous. Mm -hmm. Because there isn't one size fit all here. Yeah. 
But again, you were out on the first hole yesterday, mm-hmm. and before you played the second, you did a reset yeah. with all of them yeah. to just help them yeah. get back in there. Yeah. I could tell. They were probably so nervous to play well, in front of you. That's said, easy. That, I'm so that, scary. Uh, <laughs> you're just, they just want to show you. They want to, you know, they want to be proud students. Okay. On to storing memories. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's good because, you know, it's everything there is really good. We just now have moved that storing memories next to the Thinkbox Playbox because it kind of belongs there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we call the memory box yeah. now, your, yeah. your post-shot reaction. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's the one of the most important skills that gets so overlooked because how you react to golf shot is going to decide how much confidence you have in the future. Mm-hmm. And it's it's about actually understanding and honoring the brain science here. Yeah, no, I yeah. mean, just simply that to make a memory or to ha- you know create a memory, we need to have emotion. So anytime we we get an outcome, and or we have an experience or an event, and then there's an emotion to it, the brain goes, oh, we'll make that a memory. So I mean, the simplest way to understand that a child puts their hand on a hot stove, ah. They're not going to do that again. That's mm-hmm. a really emotionally stored memory. Yeah. But if you go to, let's say, a lecture and it's totally no engagement, it's just or a movie that's or, like yeah. Or, you, yeah. Two days later, you don't remember what they talked about or mm-hmm. what the movie was about because there is no. There's no, no reaction to exactly. It. So yeah, it's there's just, no emotion that made it stick. Yeah. No. So it's just how it works. Yeah. So we need to be smart and work use that to our advantage in golf. Mm-hmm. So when we hit great shot and good shot and good enough shot is to be some degree of pleased. So emotionally the, pleased. So the you can store it as a memory. Yeah. And we are going to hit bad shots. And that's when we would need to learn to be more objective and factual so I can learn from it. But it doesn't get stuck as a memory. So next time I have a similar shot, <gasps> you, I go, I'm going to hook it again. Yes. Or I'm going to scull it again. Because what happens is what I've stored shows up in similar situations in the future. So then how is the proper way to take feedback from a shot that didn't go your way? You can because- say the ball went forward. Close the door and move on. Okay. Or you can say, <laughs> like, you know, there's oh, no, but let's there's say it's, you go, okay, I just topped it. I topped the ball because I, I, my center of gravity was too high and my swing tempo was too fast. But you say it factually instead of, oh my God, there I went again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. No, that, yeah. that makes Always like, sense. Oh, but, I'm so bad. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I mean, those okay. things are totally useless but you you know you dissociate literally like you dissociate and and see it if you want to talk about it or analyze it you do that objectively clinically Mm -hmm. and then you close the door and it's done it's done Mm -hmm. but this sounds easy on paper (laughs) no exactly it's it's, that's why we can spend enormously much time on the golf course with the memory box and skills because it needs training in that environment because Mm -hmm. People go so automatic into habits that are not helping them. And the most common thing we see is that they overreact to everything less than perfect in a negative yeah. way. Mm-hmm. And when they hit good shots, they get too, they're too like, okay, that was good. And they move on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no emotion with the good shots, no yeah. storing, no way you're going to remember or access that as a, mm-hmm. you know, a go signal for yeah. future shot. And then, and, you know. You know, and many on the, Storing the negative things, they might not show it, but they're beating themselves up on the yeah, inside. Yeah, on the inside. Yeah. It's not always an so, ex- extroverted it's so, happening more on the inside you know. of their skin. So I told many of these ladies here, that they need to play many 18-hole rounds that after they finish the shot, they should only say one thing they liked about what they did, no matter the outcome. Okay. So just to train this positivity bias. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, because, so it could be yeah. like, you know what? I held my finish. So even though it went to the bunker, I'm, you know, I'm yeah. really proud of that. So train yourself to see the positive too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then to just, mm-hmm. it helps them like actually like the game more. Yeah. And why P is saying, Tori, it's so important to train a positivity bias because left alone, the brain, everybody's brain as a human being is designed with something called a negativity bias, meaning it, it picks up, it catches and, and stores negative things faster, stronger than positive things. And our brains do that for survival. And they know that, it, you know, when they kind of compare and what's going on with the brain, that our brains have a three to one negativity bias. 
So if we don't do anything, we're just going to notice our bad shots more yeah. and talk about them more and store them more than our good shots. Yeah. But it's Because the negativity yeah. bias. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got to be really active to create a positivity yeah. bias. Yeah. We have to go a little overboard. We do. Yeah. <laughs> so when we're having this conversation and you talk about the hot stove, yeah, I think about past tournament experiences that I've had. Yeah. So there are tournaments that have really was a tough, tough time and hard to recover from. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it makes it harder to sign up for the next one, yep. harder to show up for the next yeah. one. Yeah. And I know a lot of women in particular, because that's who I talk to the majority of time on the golf yeah. course, have gone through same experiences, yeah. you know, where they've played in a two, three day stroke play event, individual one. It was really hard, really lonely. Yeah, They didn't do that well. Yeah. Why would I ever do that again? And it's almost that memory is just so strong. Yeah. It's and, like I mean, a hot stove. It's just stove me personally, event. too. Yeah. That it makes you dread the next one mm -hmm. or not even sign up for the next one. Mm -hmm. So how do we work towards that? Because we know that playing in these events makes us a better golfer and we're passionate about becoming a better golfer. Right. So how do we move through that? How do I get that bad memory out? I need well, it out, you guys. Yeah. The thing is, the bad memory won't ever really go away, away, mm -hmm. but it becomes smaller. Yeah. And you don't access it quite so quickly. Okay. It just kind of fades to the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, and, so the, yeah. No, go yeah. ahead. No, go ahead. So the, the important <laughs> thing is we get to deal with a lot of the top players having experiences mm -hmm. like this yeah. too. And, you know, devastating things happen. So it's so important to do the evaluation smartly. So not right away after the emotional thing, but, you know, the next day or whatever, when you can be a little bit more objective, you need to still in an objective way, like I know all these things happen and it doesn't feel good, but are there still something I'm actually pleased with what I did? Mm -hmm. You need to draw out and still see if the worst thing. And then like, and then get to what is the main thing? If I'm ever going to do this again, what is the main thing I would like to do different next time? It's so important to do it. And then anytime the mind wants to go back to that, that make it black and white, make it further away. And then be disciplined to just cut it. Yeah. I said, it's history. I'm going forward and this is what I'm doing. But I would say, when I hear that, I would like you or anyone in the future tournament help them to have a better game plan and mindset for the tournament. Because I don't always believe in, if you just play more tournaments, you're going to feel better about it. I see it not happening unless you have a smarter game plan, what you focus on when you play a tournament next time. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And because I, I, we see this happening a lot, but from learning that I need to have different games within the game so I can have a more pleasurable experience. Mm -hmm. So, And this is like a discipline. It's discipline to, you know, hit an okay, good enough shot and go, that was good. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Many just, again, so building this positivity bias, mm -hmm. it takes work. Yeah. I mean, one of the things we learned during COVID, which was really interesting for us, so we didn't go to as many professional events. And so then when we went back out, like, oh, wow, we get to see y'all play again. You know, Because we still talk to them a lot yeah. in FaceTime. Yeah. But stuff. now we get to be with them. Well, the one skill that had gone away was this. <laughs> they were like, they'd hit an okay shot and they'd be like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and like the memory box or this story of memories like as a skill had just totally receded. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something you got to stay on top of. It is of. a skill. It's a golf skill because we hit shots we don't like. We mess up in tournaments. Those things are going to happen. But come on, I'm going to take this on and I'm going to be better by doing this skill. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I would say because, you know, when we have a tournament, it's not good. Sometimes if there were like most mostly the driver that went a certain way or maybe it was a pitch shot, if there are some of the situations or shots that were more the bad experiences, mm -hmm. then it would super much important to reframe the memory box of those shots, but also spend more time simulating those shots in practice. Yeah. So if I have a hardest for me the 
tee shot on one when everybody's watching. We want to create those scenarios and then help. What can what different think box and play box can help me in this situation that I'm going to test next time I'm going to do it? Exactly. So we've done this with a lot of players, and I think we mean. What do you mean? You want yes, because you're going to be leading again, and you're going to be in this mm -hmm. stressful situation. So this explore what different things you can do and then make the shot playable. Exactly. Yeah. I remember just the Mid-Am Championship here in Arizona this year yeah. was at the Champions Course, TPC Champions Course. And the first hole there has water all down the left side. And you have to, at least for me, I knew I wasn't going to use a driver. And so on the range, I would visualize the fairway, you know, maybe use two of the posts as the fairway. And you know, favor that right post and really visualize that hole over and over again just to get that first tee shot. Because I think that first tee shot was probably the thing I was thinking about a lot, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just that, you know. And I mean, so. Tori, we call that bring it on practice. Yeah. Like bring on the situation and the context and put yourself into it. Yeah. And then how, what am I going to do? What are the things I have to do here? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So to wrap it up. <laughs> Drown self-talk and useful thoughts. <laughs> and you go into specific non-productive self-talk. Yes. Four of them. Yeah. So I just want to list them just to kind of get this conversation yeah. going. So focusing on past or future, focusing on outcomes, focusing on things that are not under your control, focusing on what you are not good at or demanding perfection from yourself. So that was the non-productive self-talk that you noted in that chapter. But again, the objective is to drown your self-talk in useful thoughts. So. Yeah, and, and it, it is once again, we're fortunate today because there has been so much research and science being done with this, but we know we all have this loop that they say, like we think thoughts, yeah. think, 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 and then it creates a feeling in us and that feeling makes us act out so it's yeah. a full it reinforces self, the thought. Self fulfilling yeah. prophecies. So it's just like if I keep saying to myself, like, I'm a slow starter, I'm a slow starter, I'm a slow starter. And then I start off with a couple of bogus. It looks here. Yeah. And it's, you know, it becomes yeah. a belief you have about yeah. yourself. Or I suck at putting. Yeah, or I'm exactly. a bad putter. Yeah. So, <laughs> in my other, so, you know, fill in the blank. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and so I used to, you know, so it might be true, but it's not helpful to keep saying yeah. it, but it might not be helpful to say, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest partner on the planet. <laughs> like, I know I'm lying to myself. Yeah. <laughs> so we want everybody to take ownership. So I actually, with putting, I I used, I had a coach once who said, just keep saying you're the greatest, greatest. And it made me worse. It's like... <laughs> I realized this doesn't work. So let's say I wasn't really good yet, but I could say, you know, I'm, the way I'm practicing now, I feel I'm getting better every day. Yeah. Or I'm committing to my pets so much better all the way mm -hmm. to the finish. That I can say, and it feels true. Yeah. But if I kept building on that, then that becomes kind of my belief, and then it really helps me in my performance. Mm -hmm. So it's to find the self-talk that is believable to me and helpful and make that looping. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah because, and supports what you yeah, want. Because, I mean, yeah. I don't know how researchers ever, you know, figure this out, but apparently we have like up to 70,000 thoughts a day as humans. So it's a lot going on there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you want to have a culture that is actually helping you for your future. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I mean Today, again, with, with a couple of the ladies, I just said, okay, ladies, cut the commentary. Because <laughs> they would say, it was so cute because they would say, yeah, I, yeah, it's on the green and it was good trajectory and I stayed with my tempo. And I'm like, stop, cut <laughs> the commentary. I go, is that even, is any, all that commentary like that after the butt, does it have any value? <laughs> yeah. How is that going to make you a better player? And is that going to actually help you enjoy the game more? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, then don't do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, again, I mean, we, we try to make it fun, but the brain has this negativity bias that kind of just keeps gnawing at us. And you know, even with our self-talk that way, so... Yeah, and in yeah. golf, just like with the motion, there's so much emotion in the game of golf, but we have so much time between shots, so it's so easy to 
so overthink much and think so much. So to clean that up for men, it can be super helpful. Mm -hmm. And even the skill to learn to more quiet the mind too. I was going to say that's and, you know, something we need today yeah, more than ever. Yeah, just yeah. to get the rest and not get so exhausted. So mm -hmm. like to walk along the fairway and just take in nature. Yeah. Walk around the fairway and just feel the your you know feet in your shoes on the ground and just get yourself like I'm just taking a little golf walking meditation here for a few minutes yeah. can be super restful and good well and, and going back to what we talked about earlier with the time and the playback so op you know an optimal time would be somewhere between four and seven maybe you can go up to nine seconds in the playbox can your mind actually be quiet there's no internal dialogue for those it's all sensory for that time for those four to seven to nine seconds yeah. that's a doable trainable skill it is i mean Maybe if i I'll tell you you have to seconds. meditate now for 30 minutes and not have any self-talk good luck yeah good <laughs> that's luck. that's impossible yeah you know but to actually do a little bit of training where you can have the mind be quiet for mm -hmm. yeah 10 yeah. seconds yeah and again, these are skills. It brings me back to you use an ice skater as an example. And actually, Ashley's daughter is an ice skater, one of the best junior ice skaters Ooh. in the state. <laughs> and Yay. again, you're moving so fast that your play box mm -hmm. is just almost automatic. Yeah, yeah. But she does have the time beforehand that yeah. she probably has to prep herself yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. get into that. And again, this is in golf. It is so slow. There is so much downtime that we have to yeah. almost. That's why, you know, men on the range, when they stay and scrape and hit it, they love it because it's so easy. It becomes more like a moving sport. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we, but that's not this way it's going to be on the golf course. Exactly. There's a big problem exactly. here. Exactly. You can just feed me another ball and yeah. another ball. And you another get good at something that isn't helpful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Again, going over these essentials makes it, so again, so clear why when we showed up today and the women are feeling that empowerment, feeling that strength that they got through this the three-day camp, it was so evident because, again, switching, changing your swing, when you start thinking about swing technique and all of that, it could become very overwhelming. But knowing that these skills that we went over can really help you play your best golf and you can train that without even messing with their swing. You can already swing a golf club. You're you're good to go. But working on these things can make your game so much better. It is empowering. And yeah. it is like and these are the skills you can take with you on the golf course and can be part of your game plan on the golf course. We know if you do technical things, you need to leave it for technical training station yeah. in the practice area. Yeah. You never bring that on the golf course. So you exactly. need to know what are the other things that is very good to focus on while I play the game. Yeah. So if you're mm -hmm. going to play better in 2024, it's good to pay attention to these. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I just want to give one other shout out for all your books now, whether it's Every, Every shot. shot Has yeah. a Purpose and Be a Player, yeah. you have these action guides yeah. that are available on Amazon. Yeah. And again, it's like a workbook that you intentionally use while you're reading the book. And, and again, it will help you digest the information yeah. even better. That's yeah. what we're hoping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And remind yeah. us how, because you, you made these workbooks during COVID. Yes. And yeah. how that experience was like and, yeah. Yeah. You know. and what made you do it. Yeah. Well, I think Pia was so happy because she could now sit down and create because <laughs> she had some time to do that. Yeah, we not have the influence of coaching or going this. to tournaments. Yeah. Like, oh, I can finally put these thoughts to yeah, paper. Because, you know, it's one of our biggest passions to find more ways to share things that we know had helped so many thousands of golfers globally. Our big wish is it's, that it's uh, available to yeah. anyone mm -hmm. globally, any age, any skill level, that if I want to learn the fuller set of skills to play the game of golf, there is a way. Yeah. And yeah. it's affordable and it's doable. And we, do, we just want to keep adding to it and sharing more and more of that because... If we can help the game grow in a healthy way, it makes us very happy. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I would just say, I mean, of course, we'd love people to come here to Arizona to talk and stick and attend one of our programs or camps. And we have lots of different ones. But, you know, many people can't. Mm -hmm. And we're really passionate, as Pia said. We want to make this available to anybody anywhere. Yeah. So that's what the action guides do. Yeah. Yeah. 
What's next for Vision 54? Anything coming down <laughs> yeah. the line that you want to well, well, there, there, we, we, st we still have things that aren't produced yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, you know, so some of them are more self-public, like Amazon. So we have about another, you know, eight to ten things that are close to being done. Yeah. And then we are writing another book too. Yeah. But it, well, it's exciting. a process that's still going to take quite a while. But it's going to be more actually about how to coach. Mm -hmm. But still, it is for the coaches of the game, but... All of us are our own coaches playing too. So yes. we want to write it in a way that anyone, if you're coaching the game, but you're actually only coaching yourself, you still should get a lot out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or any parent or mm -hmm. spouse or any, you know, anybody who's helping another with where they want to go. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for doing uh, this thank today. You. you have an amazing spot here. <laughs> you inspire so many in the game. You bring so much joy to the game and you help so many of us love this game even more especially mm -hmm. during the times where it could get a little yeah get tough yeah you know yeah. Absolutely. so yeah. thanks for continuing yeah. to work with and with tori everyone. thanks for all you do yes yeah. uh, it's, it's it, greatly awesome. appreciated because yeah. you're, yeah. you're spreading it to so many humans yeah both that's person, all we can do yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. So yep, thanks great. again. And all where you can find Vision 54, all the information we've talked about today is in the show notes. And uh, thanks Vision again. Vision54.com. It's all yep. there. There you go. <laughs> thanks, thanks, ladies. Thanks.